On August 10th, 2001, at the semi-annual Dojinshi Festival Komiget, Type Moon released Kagetsu Toya. This visual novel acts as a sequel to their initial release Tsukihime, which released not even a year prior. In other words, they were very busy during their early days. A lot of people know of Tsukihime nowadays, and it's generally considered a cult classic among fans of the VN genre. Furthermore, its recognition and acclaim are higher than before with the release of Remake, and especially right now with the official English release being announced for that. With this growing relevance, some may be interested in the roots of Type Moon's iconic franchise, and for this reason you may ask yourself, what kind of story is told in its sequel? Well. It's a well thought out, interesting narrative that expands on the universe Nasu has thoughtfully created, packed into a hella cursed format. This is the most tedious visual novel I've ever had to read through. Now, hardcore Type Moon fans may be dismayed by me saying this, but allow me to explain. To begin, I'd like to discuss the format this VN takes. The visual novel is split into two main parts, the first of which, Twilight Grass Moon Fairy Tale Princess, is the long main storyline of Kagetsu Toya. Alongside this, several shorter side stories are unlocked as you get through key events of the main story. There exists 10 of these stories which are combined and titled as 10 Nights of Dream, which I'll talk about later in this video alongside the extra hidden stories too. I also love how there are little bonus features like the type moon message of the day and the fact that you unlock guest illustrations with progression of the main story. Going back to 10 Nights of Dream, unfortunately these scenarios are also locked behind story progression and I'll make the reason this is an issue clear later. But first, I'd like to bring our attention to Twilight, the bulk of Kagetsu Toya. The story of Twilight occurs one year after the events of Tsukihime, therefore without reading all the roots of Tsukihime, and perhaps plus disc, you will find it very difficult to understand this visual novel. Twilight begins at the start of a regular day where Shiki and Akuiz are having a light-hearted morning conversation. Shiki drones on about the stresses of exams and the like, as is normal, but we can't shake off this slightly ominous feeling based on some of the dialogue and events. This builds up until Shiki becomes victim to an accident. After this incident, Shiki finds himself in an amnesia-like state, which he initially blames grogginess for, but soon he finds himself not being able to recall any of the events on the days prior to his awakening. It turns out Shiki is in a bizarre dream where the same day is repeated time and time again. There is a wide array of choices that determine what kind of day you experience, and it's our job to help Shiki discover the creator of this dream, escape this endless loop, and understand why this dream is being maintained. The mechanics of this VN involve making the correct choices whilst fulfilling necessary conditions. Whilst you get navigation aids such as the ability to skip read scenes and a specific help section that keeps up with your progress, navigating through this vision novel is extremely arduous. Perhaps the flowcharts will illustrate why. No matter what choices you make, the VN will present you with the message repeat again at the end of each day. At this point you need to pick a day in the menu and continue your search. Often it feels like there is no coherent sense of chronology. Occasionally however, some events you see are follow-ups from others and can only be accessed with the clearance of the earlier scenes. This moves forward the plot. Thus I would say that following the walkthrough is the ideal approach to reading. Of course though, if you like to experiment and figure out the scene combinations yourself, like intended, feel free as it is quite fun. Because most of the story of Twilight Light is fun slice of life scenes, it almost feels like a fan disc at times, but by making the correct choices and viewing important scenes, the story progresses rather smoothly, provided you follow the walkthrough. Returning to these SOL moments, I find them rather fun to read and most of them have aged decently. That said, some of the events are crazy like the countless Kohaku bad endings and the tiger after Arkui's closet, Shiki turning into a cat after putting on that costume, which is somehow a really important scene in the visual novel as it provides you with the key that is used to unlock a couple CGs later, and many more insane funny moments. I love how funny explaining these scenes sounds without context, and even in context they are still bizarre in a good way. During the middle sections of this vision novel, it's difficult to discern the meaning of what we read through plot-wise, but the story hints towards the meaning of this dream. Approaching the later sections of Twilight, however, we get a display of how expressive Nasu's writing is. Not only is the overall story interesting, Nasu's poetic writing style is very symbolic and acts as a way of furthering the characters and lore of Tsuki 
Shihime, not to mention he writes his characters with great techniques. For example, Shiki's inner turmoil, fear and desperation is conveyed using deep language choices, rhetorical questions depicting a fighting mindset, and excellent presentation and punctuation. The reward of getting through the difficult format of this VN is an engaging mental battle, where given enough time we can overcome the odds. Finally, I'd like to add that this is not to say Nasu's writing is poor elsewhere, it's just the ending scene is pretty damn good. Whilst the ending of Twilight is a highlight, the quality of writing is generally consistent, but just plentiful in filler bear in mind. Ten Nights of Dream are a collection of short stories written mostly by Nasu, but also by a few other writers. Each of the stories are independent of one another and are entirely optional, as they are debatably canonical, but they are superbly written and just as good, if not better than the main story of Twilight in my opinion. Now. I will quickly summarise the contents of each. In Good Luck CL Sensei, CL is a teacher and must teach and quiz a class of delinquents, also known as the Tsukihime cast. CL falls in love at first sight with Shiki and can claim him, so to speak, if he gets the best grades in the class. Don't ask questions. They study the intricacies of the plot of Tsukihime and some students die along the way. Sachin suffers the most though, by far. Ultimately, CL faces a crushing failure and the story closes with her and Kohaku bonding over drinks. A story for the evening takes place after the true ending of Akiha's route in Tsukihime, where Shiki sacrifices himself for her. Akiha returns to her boarding school dormitory and finds a mysterious looking yet familiar purple envelope on her desk. Time passes and classes resume and we get a glimpse into the kinds of people Akiha resides with at the strict, student-governed Asagami Girls Academy. This little story provides us with more perspective into Akiha's lifestyle, what she thinks of, of the unusual coldness of her day-to-day, -day, the people she's surrounded with and how she's changed over the past year due to losing the one most important to her. The main story concerns the letter we are presented with initially and I really like how we're able to see more of a person in Akiha. The writing is superb. It's honestly a shame that this sequel to Akia's True Root is part of this lesser known sequel VN as it's so worth reading, but not many people know about Kigetsu Toya enough to experience this story. Crimson Moon is a short story about how Roa, the antagonist of the near side of the moon roots, meets with Arcuit. The story outlines how Roa, a priest of the church, comes to the castle of the true ancestors with differing motives from what he was sent for, and how this all had changed upon meeting Arcuit. Some important type moon lore is described Described here, and references to prominent figures in Type Moon are made also. Where's Demon God is a short story that describes the life of Nanaya Kili, head of the Nanaya clan and father of Shiki. We gather some further background into the Nanaya clan and how they operated, how Kili changes after having his son, and most importantly, how the clan were destroyed. Much like Crimson Moon, I find this story fits perfectly as a prequel of sorts to the events of Tsukihime because it really describes and gets into the lore of the story. Here in Nanako-chan SOS is a story written from the perspective of Arihiko Inui and begins with flashbacks of his feisty early relationship with Shiki, which nicely characterises him much more for us readers. Furthermore, later we get a look into his childhood which I found to be very powerful in helping me understand the kind of person he is. The main story kicks off off when Alihiko finds a mysterious creature residing in his room which cannot be touched and so is assumed by him to be some form of occult entity. Although he concludes that this being appeared because of him picking up a weapon drifting down the river, since he is weak against the occult he fails to drive out this creature and thus must come to terms with his new predicament. On the surface the story was quite, actually no, very unassuming but it actually blew me away with how well written and meaningful it was. So recommended. Imogaliso is a parody of 1992 horror sounds novel Otogaliso that features the characters of the Tono Mansion exclusively, that is Shiki, Akiha, Kohaku and Hisui. Much like the plot of Otogaliso, the cast ventures into an unseemingly uninhabited mansion unknowing of the dangers awaiting them. Whilst on the surface, atmospheric and unsettling, this story contains some funny jokes and references interlaced between making for a well-balanced piece of writing that I think Nasu had a lot of fun with. Flower of Thanatos is a short adult story that involves Shiki Hisu and Kohaku. 
I needn't say more here. Hisui Chan Inversion Impulse is a scenario written by Amane, taking place after Hisui's good end, where Kaku lives under the name Nanaya after being saved by Shiki from the poison. Unlike his peaceful morning, Shiki's day is an intense struggle, as it seems Hisui has lost her common sense and acts upon impulse, leading to a very funny situation in the household. The Tono Family Con Game, a scenario written by Waita Kenshi, begins peacefully as the Tono Mansion residents enjoy an outdoor lunch. Upon reminiscing about the past, things become uncomfortable for Kohaku, and to make up for her lack of past involvement, they relish the fact that life has changed and enjoy a game of tag with everyone involved this time. Seeing how bewildered Kohaku is by the idea is a little saddening to see, but this aside, once she accepts the fact, everything else is super wholesome as the whole cast, and that is literally everyone, gets together for an uplifting, hilariously written event. The title of Con Game refers to the fact that, more than a physical one, this game of tag is more of a game of wits. I heavily recommend this one if you want a good laugh. Finally, Dawn is a scenario written by Malukin. Restless, Shiki leaves the mansion in the dead of night due to a gut feeling, and after drifting through the streets, comes faced with a mountain of mutilated dead bodies in a closed off alleyway. He is shaken and finds blood on his hands, questioning if he is the one responsible for the massacre, but before he can pursue this thought any further, CL finds him at the scene. The narration is equally as mysterious and unordinary as the unknown cause of the dead bodies, as we find out that this Shiki who dons a heavy trench coat isn't really who he seems to be, and must come to terms with this fact. I'm fond of this story particularly among the works of Ten Knights, as this scenario feels unique for containing an enigmatic atmosphere that transitions to something more forlorn and tragic but at heart, meaningful. Once you've read all of Ten Nights, a third menu opens called Summer Festivals, in which you can enter five short scenes involving the main characters, Ark, Seo, Akia, Hisui, and Kohaku, where you enjoy a summer festival with either one of them. The stories themselves are very short, but feel very fitting for closure of this vision novel, as the emotions are bright and celebratory. Finally, for real this time, upon clearing all the content in the VN, Drinking Dreaming Moon, a scenario written by writer Takeha is unlocked and is found hidden away in the Contribution Illustration Gallery. This is a story where Shiki has a chat with the real Shiki Tono, and they discuss their relationship on amicable terms in this bizarrely serene reunion. The pair of them enjoy sake together, relish the fact that the people they care about are happy, and interestingly later, discuss the idea of solipsism and the Buddhist consciousnesses, these relating to the fact that this setting is all a convenient dream, a both sad and happy dream filled with tears and laughter alike. This is the complicated truth of the relationship these two have. Kigetsu Toya is a product of the year 2001, so expect no grand visual display. Takeuchi did cook up some new sprites however, and the CGs are noticeably crisper and more detailed compared to the original Tsukihime. I'd also like to add that this game does have a very, very small amount of explicit content, which can be disabled in the settings if you'd prefer not to look at some very dated drawings. Personally, I'd recommend doing this as the writing does not redeem the unusual visuals. When you start reading, there will be a point when the original OST plays and you already know I'm immediately jamming out. It's so iconic. On top of this, there are new OST tracks and remixes of original iconic pieces, which gives off this sense of novelty. Whilst the tracks feel dated as hell listening nowadays, they exude this atmospheric vibe, very fitting of the narrative. However, these very tracks are not plentiful and felt rather repetitive around the halfway mark of Twilight and onwards. Moreover, they are often cut short, and occasionally we are left with these jarring pauses as the track loops itself. Overall, I think all the collaborators of this visual novel did an excellent job of making something truly memorable. Most notably, I find that Nasu's writing is very well balanced and enjoyable to read through. That goes so far to mitigate the technical limitations of 2001. Nasu writes his characters with so much personality and conveys strong emotions such as detachment and isolation with skill. Piecing together the chronology of events in Twilight is a tedious task, however it pairs nicely with Shiki's state of murky memory too, 
which helps us connect with him I found. The narration and judgement of speech may be difficult for some readers as this is an NVL vision novel through and through. Moreover, there are sometimes fourth wall breaks, cultural jokes, over the top character personas, wacky action and references. A lot of the scenes of this vision novel are pretty weird and pan out in truly unexpected ways, which leads to some really wacky situations. As fun as they are, I think that some readers may struggle in places as there is a lot of significant cultural references and I found that the meanings of some scenes flew over my head entirely. Kigetsu Toya, whilst not a visual spectacle, has a format that benefits from the reader's minds to fill in some of the gaps due to lacking modern presentation standards. Because of this, I found reading this vision novel, and Tsukihime itself for that matter, very mentally engaging, which has made for a nice experience. This is not to say that I prefer this over modern visuals, but I find myself appreciating this experience. It's rewarding to read through a diverse range of VNs, especially when they can be as old as more than two decades ago. The biggest issue I have with Kagetsu Toya is that the format is hella cursed. That said, I'm sure a lot of people are also conscious about apparent issues such as the dated art and MVL formats, but these points are more subjective. As a product of 2001, it is a unique experience, but I would say is not worth reading unless you are a diehard Tsukihime fan. Perhaps if the format wasn't as ridiculous, I would say otherwise, but as things stand, this vision novel can take some motivation to get through, which is a shame. Although not for casual readers, people who enjoy Tight Moon will have a great, great experience. An unexpected highlight of the vision novel was the 10 nights and extra stories that are unlocked after the full completion of Twilight. Although Twilight is the core story, these extra stories are superb and shouldn't be story locked. Luckily for us though, there is a walkthrough to follow through that makes unlocking everything very smooth. After reading Ten Nights and the Extra Stories, this vision novel overall is something special, a thought I wouldn't have made having only read Twilight. Having said that though, Twilight was an exceptional story with structure and techniques I've never seen before, even to this day. Reflecting on the whole vision novel, I've enjoyed the meaningful philosophies and expansions of the exciting universe of Type Moon Nasu put into these scenarios, using his skilled writing and most of all his wonderful characters. I'd like to finish with my verdict, which is I am glad to have read this vision novel, and I hope today I've shared this and helped educate you all on Type Moon's second humble release. Thank you all.